Hey everyone, Steve here. It's been a while since I posted a video on our channel, mainly because I've spent the last few months producing a five-hour DaVinci Resolve 19 course that I just released on our website. If you want to learn DaVinci Resolve in a highly structured way that includes the media for following along with me, this is a course for you. You'll find the link in the description. So with that out of the way, today I want to show you my eight favorite AI features that are built into DaVinci Resolve 19 Studio. Let's get started. The first tool on my list is Superscale. Often you'll be working in a 4K timeline with mostly 4K clips, but there are occasions when I need to use clips that were recorded in HD. I'll park the playhead over this performance clip of my friend Milt. This clip was shot with a mid-2000s HD camcorder in an interlaced format. In the inspector, I'll enter 2 for the zoom level, which scales the image by 200%. I'll use the Y position scrubber to center him in the frame. While this image isn't terrible, it's noticeably soft in the fine pattern detail of his shirt. Also, the scaling brings more attention to the interlace artifacts that manifest as these jagged lines over areas of fine detail. So before you apply Superscale, you should deinterlace your footage. Right-click on the clip and choose Clip Attributes. In the Field Dominant section, choose the Field Dominant setting that matches your clip. I've found that most old-school camcorders record in upper field dominance, though in some cases a lower field setting may give you better results. After clicking OK, the interlace jaggies will be gone but you just had Resolve throw away half the data that originally constituted the frame. So here's where machine learning comes in. Deselect the clip, then move the playhead back over it. In the inspector, you'll now see a new retime and scaling option labeled Deinterlace Quality. From the menu, choose DaVinci Neural Engine. This option uses an advanced machine learning model to analyze the motion between the two interlace fields and then intelligently reconstructs them into a single frame to produce a more aesthetically pleasing image. With the interlacing issue dealt with, it's time to enable Superscale. Superscale is only available in the Studio version of Resolve, but it offers a far better scaling result because it uses machine learning to enhance image detail and sharpness by creating new pixels. At the bottom of the inspector window, click the toggle next to Superscale. Use this menu to choose the level of upscaling. For example, 2x would scale 1080p footage to 4K, while 4x could scale it up to 8K. I'll set this to 2x enhanced. I also found that slightly increasing the sharpness improves the image. Once enabled, the algorithm goes to work to upscale the image. Because it's a computationally intensive task, it can take some time to render. On my older M1 MacBook Pro, it took almost a minute to render. But the end result is impressive. The fine detail on his shirt and instrument are now much sharper. The next awesome machine learning tool that I don't know how I lived without is the Audio Ducker. In this section of my timeline, I have another performance clip of Milt that overlaps his dialogue at the head and tail. Playing back from the beginning, the music level overwhelms Milt's voice. I should play a chart. In the past, I would have dealt with this using audio keyframes, but no longer. I'll start by selecting the track header that contains the sound that I want to duck. In this case, the music I want to duck is in track A2. I'll reveal the Audio Inspector. If you're using the free version of Resolve 19, you should see an option labeled Ducker. Because I'm using the Studio version of Resolve, there are more options listed here than what you would see in the free version, but you should still see Ducker. Enable it by clicking the toggle. From the Source menu, choose the audio track the algorithm will monitor in order to duck the sound of the currently selected track. I'll choose Audio 1, which is the track that contains Milt's voice. I found that a duck level of 18 works best. I'll play back again. I should play a chart. I like improvising. The music is ducked while he talks, and when he stops talking, the music returns to the previous volume level. And best of all, the audio ducking is being applied at the track level, which means that anywhere else the sound level in track 2 overlaps with the sound level in track 1, the audio will be ducked automatically. So at the end of the performance clip, the audio is automatically ducked again as Milt's voice comes back in. All of the players that I was uh, attracted to were, yeah, major improvisational players. One of my favorite machine learning tools in DaVinci Resolve 19 is Detect Scene Cuts. There are several ways that I use this feature depending on what I need to do. Often, I'm working for a client who wants me to take a video shot in landscape and turn it into a vertical video for their Instagram and YouTube channels. And maybe the video could use some color correction as well. 
The problem is, they don't have access to the original source clips nor the project the video was created from. They can only provide me with the final exported video file. Here I have a vertical timeline that contains a single HD clip of the exported master. As I scrub over it, you'll notice that the subjects are not center framed because during the shoot they were composed for landscape delivery. I'm going to address this using a tool called Smart Reframe. But before I do, this long clip needs to be split up into separate clips. If I apply Smart Reframe now, it will make it far more difficult to make adjustments to the shots that vary in their framing. From the Timeline menu, I'll choose Detect Scene Cuts. After a few seconds of analyzing the clip, cuts are placed in the timeline exactly where a shot or scene change occurs, and it's very accurate. If I jump into the color page, each clip is represented by a timeline thumbnail, so I can make color corrections to the clip as if I had access to the individual source clips. But the main reason I want the clip cut up into scenes is because I have more control over the reframing that's required for vertical delivery. With the clip cut into scenes, I can go through my timeline and make transform adjustments where needed. But that's still a lot of work, which is why I love Smart Reframe. I'll undo those steps, then press Command A to select all the clips. In the inspector, I'll locate Smart Reframe just below the transform controls, then click the Reframe button. DaVinci Resolve's neural engine kicks in to figure out where the subject is located in each shot, then intelligently moves the image right or left to keep the subject in the center of the frame. I'll play back and jump to each cut so you can see the result. The algorithm does a really good job, but it does get confused every now and then. I'll scrub the playhead over the performance clip. Just over halfway through the clip, the framing moves from Milt to the drummer, then back to Milt again. I can address this by choosing the subject using a reference point. First, I need to make sure that only the problem clip is selected. From the Objects of Interest menu, I'll choose Reference Point and click this button to choose the reference point using a graphic overlay that appears in the viewer. Make sure the box is over the subject you want to remain centered, then click Reframe. Scrub over the clip and you'll see that the framing now stays fixed on him. Hopefully, you're now seeing why I prefer splitting the clip into separate scenes. With the video reframe for vertical delivery, my next go-to AI tool is creating subtitles from audio. I'll go back to the Timeline menu and choose Create Subtitles from Audio. A window appears that allows me to choose a language and basic formatting options. In most cases, I just leave these at their defaults and click Create. The audio is analyzed and after a few moments, a subtitle track labeled ST1 is created with all the auto-generated captions placed exactly where they align with the audio in the timeline. I'll play back from the beginning to check the accuracy. I was more really uh, aspiring to be a jazz player, so I wasn't uh, really looking forward to working in bands where I had to read music. The built-in language model did a really good job. Not only was the spelling correct, but the algorithm even added proper punctuation and grammar. For example, names were properly capitalized and commas and periods were added. Not too long ago, you had to pay a service to create captions with this level of accuracy. I regularly edit long interviews and podcasts, and the ability to create a rough cut from transcribed text is beyond just a convenience at this point. It's a necessity for me. Here, I have a short interview clip of Milt. With the clip selected, I'll click the Transcribe button. After a few seconds, the transcription window appears with my transcribed text. I'll start by selecting just two words, I was. Then press Shift F12 to add the selection to the timeline. I'll select a sentence where he says he was aspiring to be a jazz player and press Shift F12. I'll select the next block of text where he says that he wasn't looking forward to working in bands where he had to read music, then press Shift F12 again. By the way, Shift F12 is the keyboard shortcut for an append edit. I'll play back what I've edited so far. I was aspiring to be a jazz player, so I wasn't uh, really looking forward to working in bands where I had to read music. I could go on, but you get the idea. This tool is really a time saver when you want to create a rough string out of the best sound bites in your content. If you haven't used Resolve 19's IntelliTrack AI feature, it's very accurate, making fast work of tracking text to a moving subject in the Fusion page. Even if the Fusion page intimidates you, it's super simple to set up and use if you follow my steps. Here, I have a solo performance clip of Milt and the edit page timeline. I'll press Shift 5 to move the clip into the Fusion page. With the media in node selected, I'll press Shift Spacebar to bring up the Select Tool palette. I'll enter Track, 
then select the standard tracker and click Add. Next, I'll move the play to the start of the time ruler, then move the tracker overlay over the bell of his saxophone. Trackers love area of high contrast, so I'll position it over the light reflection in the brass. In the inspector, I'll then click the Track Forward button. After a few seconds, I'll scrub over the clip to check my track. With machine learning, the tracker is more intuitive, meaning it's more accurate than the point tracker from Resolve 18, and it's also much faster. With the tracker selected, I'll add a text node. Select the text node, and enter Milt's name in the text input box of the inspector. I'll then need to connect the output of the text node to the foreground input of the tracker node. And then the text disappears because we haven't told the tracker what to apply the tracking data to. Select the tracker node, then click the Operation button in the Tracker Inspector. Set the operation to Match Move. Now the text tracks with the saxophone. But in order to move the text, I'll need to go back to the tracker panel and use the X and Y offset wheels to position the text where I want it. So what are your favorite AI features in DaVinci Resolve 19? Did I leave any out that you think are important? Please leave a comment and thanks for watching.